Welcome to Soundtrack Limited, a place where two friends talk about music to each other. Hey, what's up? Today is January 28th, and uh, yeah, just try to ignore that on my nose if you can. You probably can't, but whatever. So for those of you who are subscribed to our channel, you might have noticed that Robert didn't post a video on Thursday. But it's fine, because he has a busy school schedule during the week. I do too. So we've resolved that we're just going to shoot videos over the weekend, and then post on Monday and Thursday as we've been doing already. Sorry for the flub last week, but we're going to rectify it starting this week. This one right here. See that poster over there? It's falling down a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's about to be obscured by the album art. General Dome by Buke and Gaze. So Buke and Gaze are an experimental rock duo who take a very DIY approach to their music. So DIY to the point that they've actually created their own instruments for this project. And these instruments turn their sound into something that is dark, mechanical, and definitely unconventional. So you have the Gaze, which provides this really distorted and earthy low end, and then you have the Buke, which is more around in the mid-range, but it can also be kind of noisy and dissonant in its own way. Together they sound kind of like you're walking through this post-industrial abandoned factory where everything just kind of sparked to life on you and you're like, oh my god, dude, these gears are turning on their own. Don't go wandering through abandoned factories. Back to the video. Now a big risk that comes with building your own instruments and adhering to like a strict DIY approach is that you run the risk of becoming a one-trick pony. And to my pleasant surprise, I wasn't really feeling that at all as I was listening through this record. Which is good. These guys do enough to keep things engaging and immersive, even given their self-imposed constraints. For one, they add in a lot of cool extra textures sometimes. Like, there's a really nice tinkling piano that comes in on Twisting the Lasso of Truth. A surprise auto-tune vocal on one track, a weird drum machine pattern that comes in on the last track. In addition to all these interesting sounds that come in and out, you also have really winding song structures, which makes it hard to tell where the album's going to take you from one moment to the next. For instance, the track Split on the Lip, No Blood on the Beard ends with this really abrupt change in pace that I didn't see coming the first time I heard, and this was already after a few rhythmic shifts already occurred earlier in the song. Speaking of rhythmic shifts, the rhythms on this album, oh my god. How do you, how do, you do that with the boom boom, the bap bap, and the ding da ding da ding all at once with the two people? I don't get it. How do you do it? So these two people tap out percussion with their feet while simultaneously playing oppositional rhythms on their respective instruments and singing. Playing this stuff live must be almost impossible, so... Kudos to you, Buchan Gaze. And it's not even like they're just timekeeping when they're playing the bass drum and tambourine, like, they're complicating the song even more, which makes this record so densely technical. So what do we got so far? We have really cool instrumental quirks coming in every once in a while to spice things up a little. We have unpredictable song structures. We have really rich and dense polyrhythms being tapped out by two people. Let me just sing this album's praises a little bit more before I get to the stuff that I didn't like as much. Aaron Dyer's vocal performance on this entire album is really consistent, almost taking on an operatic quality to her soprano in points, especially on the track in the company of Fish. So her voice really shines on this album. I really like- oh my sleeves up. I also really like the way that a lot of the riffs on this album play out, especially the opening one on my best Andre shot, which has this really cool atonal no-wave vibe to it that sits just right with me. Reminds me of that James Chance of the Contortions album I've been listening to a whole lot as of late. I also really like the gaze line on the title track, which is just this driving one-note strum, and the buke, which sits on top, is just providing this reverby dissonance that reminds me a little bit of mirrored era battles. So add riffs and vocal performance to the myriad of reasons why I like this album. I do have one major reservation, though. And it's not to a hotel if you know it. Shut up. Given how rhythmic this record is, I really wish that there was more variation in the percussion that they used. I think that the bass drum tambourine combo works great on a lot of their songs, but going forward I would love to hear more foot percussion and see what else these guys can do with that. Another minor thing, I don't really understand the point of the interludes because they're just kind of thrown in the middle of the record almost consecutively, but I don't know, someone else might think that the interludes help out the flow of the album. It really depends on who you ask, probably. So all in all, this album stuck with me the most this week. If you're looking for something that's skewed, intricate, and or noisy, then give this record a shot. You'll probably like it. I give this record two happy headphones out of ten, which means that I recommend it. So Robert, I guess just listen to Royal Baths again for Thursday and tell me what you think of it, um, and then I will listen to your request for the following week. So TTFN, good sir.